A warning before we begin. Scam accounts pretending to be me are targeting commenters on my videos, asking to speak privately on Telegram, saying you won something, or otherwise trying to get you to give up your private information. This is an issue happening to many creators right now. Please be extra vigilant. Comments truly made by me will display my verified username, which is highlighted in gray and has a check mark like this. A comment from me will look like this. As you can see, my handle is verified. If you see any scam accounts pretending to be any creator, you can help by flagging them appropriately. And if you're one of those people so desperate to give me money that you'd give it to a scam account, you could always send it to my cash app or my Venmo. <clears throat> anyway, uh, let's get into the episode. Few things are more eerie and devastating than when someone disappears, especially when you know that it was against their will, like in the case of a young child. The lack of closure often leads to those close to the missing person to become suspicious of others, placing blame as they desperately seek answers, all while hoping that their loved one is still out there, as desperate to go home as their loved ones are for them to come home. But the world is a particularly dark place, with many sinister people ready and willing to take advantage of an innocent child's youthful ignorance. Children usually see the world through a much different lens than we do. Their families are their worlds. A friendly smile would never harbor evil intentions. You're safe. You're loved. But as we grow older, we begin to see things for what they truly are. And while still so much of the world is good, there is a dark side. And sometimes a child is forced to do what no child should be required to do. To learn that lesson the hard way. Another huge thanks to CBDX.com for sponsoring yet another episode and allowing me to bring to you more content. How's 2023 going for you so far? Oh man, that sucks. But I've got something that can help. The fantastic products over at CBDX.com can help. CBDX is the world's premier provider of legal THC products. No more hanging out at some weird dude's stuffy ass apartment, waiting for him to sell you a bag that he assured you he already had. But then he's like, oh, my guy's dropping it off to me. He should be here like any sec. And you end up sitting there for over an hour watching him play Xbox 360? No, not anymore. CBDX makes it way easier. You go to cbdx.com slash Rob, link in the description below, choose your products and check out using one of two codes. If it's your first time using CBDX, use code Rob and you'll get 20% off. If you're a returning customer, use code Rob X and you'll still get 10% off. But CBDX is so badass, they've got a deal for everyone. And their products are no joke. All of this stuff is fully legit with Delta 8 and Delta 9 THC, the most abundant, potent forms of THC. Go ahead and read the reviews and get some of their famous gummies. Seriously, these things will rock your world. And a huge thanks to all of you who have already used CBDX so far. You have no idea how much it helps. Just an awesome company, but also me as well. So hit up cbdx.com slash Rob linked below. Grab what you can before it's gone and use code Rob or Rob exit checkout for a discount available only to my audience. And now turn off the lights and let's get into the video. Kyron Horman was born on September 9th, 2002 to Desiree Young and Kane Horman. Eight months into Desiree's pregnancy, the two divorced, yet shared custody of Chiron after he was born until 2004 when Desiree was diagnosed with kidney failure, which required a substantial change to her lifestyle. Kane took over full custody and in 2007 got remarried to a substitute teacher named Terry Moulton, and the two had their own child together, a baby girl named Kiara in 2008. On the morning of June 4th, 2010, Kyron Horman was taken to Skyline Elementary School in Portland, Oregon by his stepmother, Terry. She then waited for him while he attended the school's science fair. It was at the fair where this photo was taken. 
Chiron's last photo. He can be seen smiling happily. Within an hour of this photo being taken, Chiron disappeared. At around 8.45 a.m., Terry left the school and believed that Chiron had headed to class as she stated that the last time she saw him, he was walking in that direction. However, Chiron never made it to the classroom at all. Then, later in the day, when Kane and Terry walked to the bus stop at 3.30 p.m. to meet Chiron, he was nowhere to be seen. The bus driver claimed he never even boarded the bus. Terry called the school and learned that Chiron had been marked absent for the day and hadn't been seen since early on in the morning at the science fair. 911 was contacted immediately thereafter. Subsequently, local and state police, as well as the FBI, launched a massive investigation into Chiron's disappearance. On June 12, 2010, hundreds of rescuers and volunteers from Oregon, Washington, and California launched one of the largest search operations in Oregon's history. This massive search effort to find Chiron included more than 1,300 searchers who combed through wooded areas around Skyline Elementary School over the course of 10 days. Many volunteer organizations also donated their time and resources to the search. A reward of $25,000 was initially posted, but soon after was expanded to a $50,000 reward for information leading to Chiron's discovery. Despite police investigations and searches, there have been no leads found in this case. Terry Horman, Chiron's stepmother, has been at the center of speculation throughout the investigation, as some believe she may be involved in Chiron's disappearance, either as an accessory or an accomplice. She has denied any involvement, and no charges have been filed against her. But these facts have proven to not be quite enough to get Terry out of the harsh, dubious glare of the public eye. See, there are several things that bolster the theory that Terry was involved. For one, on the day of Chiron's disappearance, there were reports from a neighbor who claimed to have seen Terry back at the house around 9.45 a.m., an hour after she claimed to have left the school and had watched Chiron walk in the direction of his classroom, the classroom he never made it to. According to the neighbor, Terry had two items. The first item, a duffel bag. The second item, a shovel. Not the kinds of items you want to be seen with when you're suspected of someone's disappearance. Additionally, police found a map on her computer showing different routes between Skyline Elementary School and her home that morning. Considering Terry certainly knew the way to school and back already, this is arguably even more suspicious than the items she was carrying, especially when there's no record of her having had any reason to take a different route home from the school that day. But this wasn't all. Five months before Chiron's disappearance, Terry Horman offered their landscaper, Rodolfo Sanchez, quote, a lot of money to put an end to her husband, Chiron's father, Kane. He testified that she had asked him to perform the hit in January of 2010. Despite police equipping Sanchez with a wire in an attempt to get Terry admitting to organizing the hit, this unfortunately didn't produce anything. Kane wisely did end up divorcing and getting a restraining order against Terry, however. Terry went on to fail two separate polygraph examinations regarding Chiron's disappearance. This information has been used to fuel speculation that Terry may have had a hand in Chiron's disappearance, but it still doesn't end there. 
two witnesses have placed a man in Terry Horman's truck on the morning of Kyron's disappearance. Police sought the man, stating that finding him could provide critical information regarding what happened to Kyron after 9 a.m. on the morning he vanished. Unfortunately, the man's identity has never been uncovered and he has failed to come forward with any information. The man's existence hasn't been confirmed either, but with two separate witnesses claiming to have seen him with Terry in her truck, chances are good that he does in fact exist, and he could very likely have something to do with Kyron's disappearance. Terry's friends have also been questioned in regard to Kyron's disappearance since authorities believe that one of them may know something about what happened. Several of her close associates were subpoenaed by the Multnomah County Grand Jury, including D.D. D. Spitcher, who had reportedly been providing Terry with support and advice shortly before the investigation began. Spitcher was cooperative during questioning and allowed a search of her property and car, but she has consistently maintained that Terry is innocent stating that if she believed Terry were capable of bringing harm to a child in such a way, she wouldn't be her friend whatsoever. But a record of Speecher's activities on the day of the disappearance has raised some eyebrows too. For instance, Speecher was working a gardening job for a homeowner in northwest Portland and abruptly left at 11.30 a.m. and was gone for 90 minutes then returned. It's also alleged that she aided Terry in the purchase of an untraceable cell phone, but these things haven't resulted in any leads, and the involvement of Terry Horman's friends in this case continues to remain unclear. As for Kyron's loved ones, his father, Kane, launched an organization called the Kyron Horman Foundation in 2010 which not only seeks to find Chiron, but any other children who are missing or endangered, and to advocate for the families of those who have lost a child. Desiree has worked tirelessly as well, all in hopes of locating her son and bringing him home. According to an interview in 2020, Desiree Young has stated that the search for Chiron has narrowed down significantly to an area of around 100 acres in size, but was unable to give any specifics in regards to locations within that area. It's been 12 years, 7 months, and 5 days since Kyron Horman disappeared. That's 12 birthdays, Christmases. 4,601 days since he was last seen by those who love him. And their only nightmare, worse than Chiron going missing to begin with, would be to never see him again. Or to ever know his fate. Chiron would be nearly 20 years old today. So much precious time lost and the one responsible has yet to pay the price. If you have any information regarding the disappearance of Kyron Richard Horman, please contact the Multnomah County tip line at 1-503-261-2847 or contact the National Center for Missing and Exploited Children at 1-800-THE-LOST. Thank you for watching. If you're interested in dark topics such as this, be sure to subscribe to my channel and turn on notifications. But more importantly, be sure to check in on my channel from time to time or follow me on my social media, because that's the only way to know for sure if I've uploaded a new video. And you can always submit a case you'd like me to cover, whether it's true crime, mystery, paranormal, or whatever else, by sending me an email at seriouslystrangebiz at gmail.com as shown on screen now and another very special shout out to cbdx 
for being such an incredible sponsor and helping me so much towards bringing you all more content. If you can, be sure to head to cbdx.com slash rob linked below. Give them a try. It not only helps them, but helps me tremendously as well. Thanks again to all of you. Watch the shadows and stay alive out there.